Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is when to use Azure Logic Apps stateless execution mode. Let's go. So let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So naturally Azure Logic Apps and this applies to both the consumption version and the standard SKU where you're using stateful execution. There's a rich run history model and so this is the goodness that you see whenever you run a transaction or an interface and then you want to go step by step and be able to go ahead and see you know the inputs and outputs for every single action and determine how long each of those actions took. On top of it there is some durability that does exist inside of the platform as well and we can support long running capabilities so you know we can have interfaces that are running for hours, days, even months uh, we still will have that uh, that transaction active and we don't have to worry about timeouts from that perspective. But with all of this richness comes a price and that price is in the form of performance. There's going to be a lot of rights to external storage to essentially track all of this information and naturally that comes at a performance cost. Now what if we wanted to have low latency interfaces especially when we just need to look up data. So perhaps we need to go ahead and look up specific IDs for some sort of object in a CRM. Like, for example, we want to create an opportunity, but in order to create an opportunity, we need to get an ID for a contact so that we can actually go ahead and link those two entities together. Doing a lookup for that specific contact ID isn't an overly sensitive call. Like, if that actually failed and we had to call again, that wouldn't be the end of the world. Now, missing out on writing an invoice to an ERP, that's a big deal. And so we can actually take advantage of the stateless execution mode and we can use it in some of those scenarios where we can quickly just do a lookup and we want to perform read data. Or in theory it could be write data, but what you're giving up is you are going to give up that rich run history that you might be used to. And yes, you can go ahead and temporarily set it from a debug perspective, but as soon as you do that naturally you're going to incur those performance penalties as a result. Now, in addition to some of those the limitations I just called out, there's a few others. There is a subset of triggers that are available. Now, these are going to be like the built-in triggers. And so we're talking about request, service bus, and event grid um, as examples. If you wanted to go ahead and use, say, like Outlook or, you know, some of the Azure hosted, you know, services, that's not going to happen, at least not at this point in time. Now, another thing you need to be aware of is message size. If you're going to be passing in messages greater than 64 KB, probably better off going down the stateful route. Same thing with uh, execution times. What you can expect is around five minutes. That's like the longest duration you're going to have an interface running from that perspective. And part of the reason for this is we don't have any persistence that's going on. It's not like we're writing checkpoints to some sort of storage facility and we can dehydrate and rehydrate instances, everything's in memory. And naturally, when everything's in memory, there's naturally some fixed pool of memory that's going to be available to us as well. And so for those reasons, we have to balance both message size and execution time as well. And then from a similar manner, the interaction model is going to be synchronous, right? So we're not going to have those asynchronous models where we can, you know, subscribe to webhooks and, and uh, be able to sort of model like asynchronous HTTP calls that's not going to be possible here as well. But all in all it's very useful so let's go ahead talk a little bit about a scenario. So I alluded to this a little bit before and this is just one scenario. There's, there's naturally going to be other use cases for when you can use stateless but an inter interaction between a couple systems and as I mentioned before maybe we needed to get a series of reference data you know those don't need to go through a stateful transaction right we could go ahead and make those requests do it quite quickly and then when we want some durability, let's go ahead, let's you know issue a post. And from that perspective, we could go ahead and write data to say a system of record and know that we've got more checkpoints, checks and balances from a durability perspective. Now, another thing is like in general, Logic Apps typically doesn't sit in between like an end user and some other system, although nothing's stopping you from doing it. In the past, that's been a little bit challenging to achieve because those transactions will take longer to complete. Now with stateless, so it does open up some new opportunities where you're going to see when we run our logic app that we can do some pretty quick execution and as a result 
I think it unlocks some of those scenarios as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a little bit of a test. Now, this isn't gonna be like a total scientific test, but it should give you some you know, representative data just to give you a sense like, I wonder how much I can expect. And so what we've done or what I've done is I've got two logic apps, exact same design. One is running in a stateless manner, one is running in a stateful manner. Uh, in order to keep things fair, I ran three warm-up calls just to make sure the runtime was initialized. And then what I do is I go ahead and make five subsequent calls. I'm not using any sort of load or test harness. I'm just doing this manually from Postman. So we're just going to call it five times sequentially. And now what are we going to do? We're just going to receive a request, HTTP. We're going to initialize a variable. It's just going to be a float. Uh, it's going to be called total. And what we want to be able to do is we want to list 15 invoices from Dataverse. And we want to be able to calculate the total amount of all of those records. And so I've modeled this in such a way that we're going to retrieve the same 15 records so there's no sort of variance from that perspective. And then all we're going to do is we're going to loop through each of the records in that 15 record result set and then just go ahead and add up the amount and then we're just going to return that total amount value back to the caller and then we'll be able to compare the uh, two different execution times itself. So let's go ahead, let's jump into a demo. Okay, so as called out in the slides, here is the logic app. Now in this case, it's the stateful execution, but otherwise it's exactly the same as I had described previously. And now we're in the stateless and you can see they are identical. So what we're gonna do now is just flip into Postman and we will run some executions here. Okay, we're in, the, in Postman and we're in the stateful execution. So let's go ahead and let's send some requests over. Um, just before I hit record, I did kick off a few of these. So the service should be relatively warm. You can see the first request was 5.84 seconds, 4.82, 4.26, 4.74. Now what we'll do is we'll flip over to the stateless tab and we'll go ahead and call the stateless version of this logic app. So we had roughly 1.48 seconds, 1 1.5, 0.8, just over one second, uh, 0.7. And so that gives you a sense of the, the magnitude of difference between calling these two interfaces. Now I'm back in the Logic Apps portal here, the Azure portal, and what we can see here is I'm on the stateless version of this, and if I go ahead and hit refresh, note that we don't have any run history here. And so this would be one of the byproducts of using stateless versus stateful. Now I could tempor temporarily enable it by clicking on this button here, uh, but we're not gonna go ahead and do that at this point. But if we flip over to the stateful version of this, naturally we can go ahead and see our run history as we've seen before. And so here we can see the, the relevant durations for the calls that we've previously made. Now, when I was building out the initial uh, logic apps, I did record my results. They're not all that dissimilar than what I sh just showed you. Uh, perhaps these first two executions were higher, the rest were fairly representative from that perspective. but. This was what my experience when I ran this, the prior day of recording this segment. There's some noticeable differences here. Now, naturally this is a small pool of requests, but still it gives you a sense of what you're looking at when you use stateless versus stateful. That concludes another video on the channel itself. Thanks for checking it out. If you're not following me on Twitter, go ahead and do so at, at Weirzy. You're on YouTube already. Any likes, subscribes, comments, always welcome. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.